Greetings and salutations. Welcome to today's video on level one science 90940, the mechanics external paper. This is the 2019 examination, and um, we'll just get into it. So this is question one of the examination paper. Now on top of the exam booklet, you will get given these equation sheets. So you do not need to memorize any of the equations in this particular standard, but you need to know how to use them. Okay, so what I tend to do with all the calculations, I will put these equations next to the question and I'll train you guys how to use these equations because this, um, you know, these equations are your most important asset. Just like the table vines and the period table for the assets and bases paper, you need to know how to use this. Okay, so let's get started. Question one, this is a very, very um, typical paper looking at a speed time graph. So the question is looking at a um, a boat travels across a lake to, at, um, to the start of a walking track. The boat, the graph shows how um, the, the boat's journey. So the most important thing when you see a graph like this, the first thing first guys, you need to look at the axis label. So this is a speed time graph. Okay, so if it is, it, if it is a speed time graph, then you are when you're trying to do this particular achieve question here to describe the motion of the boat during each of the sections of the journey, it will be a little bit different if I had to if I were to change the speed to distance. So you've had the distance time graph, you will have completely different motions because you've changed the axes. But looking at this particular question, when you have a speed time graph, so for section A, you have a constant increase of speed over time because your speed is incre is increasing your speed is increasing as you go through time so this is constant acceleration okay so this is constant acceleration and if we look at section b this is you're going at three you're going at three meters per second for you know 300 meters this is constant speed And if you look at the last one, which is just constant deceleration. Constant deceleration. Now, if you want, you can actually uh, write the, let's say this is constant speed at three meters per second, because that's given on the graph. You can say the constant acceleration for the first 400 meters like they did in the marking schedule, but this will be enough. This is an achieved cushion. We're not going to spend too much time on this. But just before we move on, if I change the speed, like say you have the same graph, but I have distance versus time graph, if I have the same thing, um, excuse my drawing, let's say that's a replicate of that, the diagram over there, but instead of a speed time graph, I have distance time graph, then section A this section A, B, C, section A will be constant speed, section B will be stationary, constant C will be constant speed in the opposite direction. So the most important thing guys, you need to look at the axis title, okay? Uh, so let's move on to the next one. Calculate the acceleration of the boat in the force for uh, in the first 400 seconds. So um, this is something I tend to do when as a student um, because they tend to do this in the exams. You know, if the exam, if the the examiner, the writer is quite kind, they already told you what the first 400 seconds is, is acceleration. So if you didn't write constant acceleration here, you made a mistake because I already told you the answer is 400 uh, for the first 400 seconds is acceleration. So how do we calculate acceleration? So you have a speed time graph. So this is speed time graph. And the, the first lot, you're looking at a constant, um, you're looking at a straight line. So the just remember the gradient, the gradient of a speed time graph is acceleration in a speed time graph. So how do we calculate the gradient? Gradient is calculated using rise over run. So it's how high it went up and how 
far to the right it went by okay so this is what i tend to do you can do this with any points i always go with the first point so this is the first 400 seconds i look at the first point i look at the last point now this will be the same answer if you use any points but then the initial point the end point is always the easiest so this is what i try to train my guys to do my students to do just do the dots you know do the little triangle and just you ask just ask yourself how high did it go up by so that's um that's three how far to the right did it go by? It went by 400. So for this calculation, you would do three um, divided by 400, and then you will get 7.5 times 10 to the power of negative three meters per second per second. Or you can write it as 0 0.0075, uh, that's fine as well, but make sure you have the unit. Now again, um, just on the side note here, you may get if you use a calculator you get this if you don't set your settings you tend to get this now we tend to accept this in year 11 but that is a very very poor representation uh, of the number that e just means times 10 you know exponential times 10 to the power of negative 3 so just make sure you convert that to something like this it just looks so much better um, but we tend to accept it because it's only a cheap cushion okay so without further ado let's move on to the next one c explain why the acceleration of um why explain the acceleration and motion of the boat showing section b by discussing the horizontal forces on the boat so if you if you remember section b let's go back up if you look at section b we said it's going at a constant speed of three meters per second um, at for that for that exp, um, for that period of time so if you have a boat um those students um, the students that i teach at school know how horrible of a person i am with my handwriting and my drawing um so i'll try my best so in this case we're not really interested in the vertical forces we're just interested in the horizontal forces so the vertical forces are force and uh, are gravity and support but we're not really interested in those for this particular question so the forward force is going to be thrust or engine force because yeah, it depends on what type of boat you have. If you have an engine, it has an engine force. If it has sails, and you're just looking at thrust. And then on the other side, going the reverse direction, you have friction. You know, you think you can go with drag. Um, they're all fine. Now the key thing is, guys, when you if you were to draw these diagrams, you have to understand that the friction force and the thrust force are equal in value but they are going in the opposite direction so when you if you were asked to draw force diagrams you have to make sure that the, the two arrows are the same size because you want to show understanding that the two forces are equal but then you may go why are the forces equal because the motion of the boat is going at constant speed so if it was going at constant speed that means um, if you look at the forces side of things, so only th um, so what is the force? You know, if we go back to the beginning of the topic, what is the force? A force is something that causes something to accelerate. Now, if you have two forces, in this case friction and thrust, working against each other, and they perfectly cancel each other out, and the boat is already moving the boat will be going at a constant speed okay so this is where the idea of net force comes in if net force is balanced or equal to zero so they cancel each other out that means it's either stationary or going or going at a constant speed and we already know this particular boat is going at a constant speed of three meters per second so that's why it's going at a constant speed because the forces are balanced that means the thrust force and the friction force must be equal in size and um, the, so the net force is balanced so there is no acceleration so it is going at a constant speed so if you look at the answers here um, the thrust so you got thrust friction slash drag they equal and opposite because it's going at a constant speed means there's no acceleration that means the net force must be zero that means the forces are balanced and 
net force equals zero, therefore there's no acceleration. Okay, so this is a very, very typical excellence question. So you're linking multiple ideas together. You are linking to the speed time, uh, speed time diagram. You are linking to the force diagram. You're linking to the forces acting on the object and then the idea of how net force um, contribute to the motion. Okay, so I always give people this um, example, like say, if you, um, like say next to our school, we have um, time zone. So if you ever played the, the air hockey, you know, you put a coin in, then the machine start working, then you can um, start hitting the puck and trying to get the puck into the opposite person's goal. So if you imagine that particular air hockey machine being in, infinitively big, and then you give it a hit, initially it will start to accelerate, and then you will keep going until you have reached kind of like a terminal velocity, you can't go any farther because you can't accelerate indefinitely, and then you'll be going at a constant speed because there's no more acceleration unless you keep hitting it. Um, so just remember that the forces need to be unbalanced if there is an acceleration, otherwise when it's balanced it's either stationary or going at a constant speed. Okay, next one. Show the distance is travel travel by the boat is sixteen fifty meters. Now this is rather generous because they told you the answer. A lot of my students don't understand questions like these. If you get if I got a question like this, if I was a student, I'll be laughing because they gave me the answer. They told me the answer is sixteen fifty meters. That means if you got an answer different to sixteen fifty meters, you did something wrong. So we're looking at the total distance. So when we're looking at total distance of the speed time graph, this is the area. This is the area under the graph under the speed time graph. Speed time graph. So if we come back to here, um, I was going to, let me just gently shade it in. So it is this entire area underneath this graph. Okay, so that looks rather bad. Um, so looking at it now, it's a little bit difficult to, to do. So what we can do, we can just break it down to three different shapes. You can see this is a triangle, you can see this is a rectangle, and this is another triangle. So if I do the three separate areas se um, separately, add them up, that'll be my answer. So for this particular one, how do I calculate the area of a triangle? It is half times base times height. And in this, again, they're quite generous because it started at zero. So this is the thing that we did with the rise and run again. So just look at this line. Look at this dotted line. How high is it? And look at the how far it went from the first point, from this point to this end of the dotted line. So the base is 400. The height is 3. And that's going to give you 600 meters for that triangle. If we look at the section B, this is a rectangle. So we look at the length of this, then we look at the length of the dotted line that we just did. So to look at the triangle is simply just 3 times 300. Now people ask me, where did you get 300 from? Because the, this point, let me just get rid of the other bit so we can see quite clearly what we're looking at here. If I do the graph, so if I extend the graph, so if I just draw, if you had a different color pen or pencil, you can just do the side pencil uh, using that pencil. Can you see I'm trying to calculate the area of this section B, which is just this line multiplied by this line. So what did it start with? 400. What did it end with? 700. So the difference is 300. So this is 900 meters. And then to calculate the area of this triangle, which is half times base, which is 100, because you're going from 700 to 800 times the height, which is again that same line, which is 3, then that's going to give me 150 meters. If you go 600 plus, one nine, uh, plus 900 plus 150, that's going to be 1650 meters, and that's what we're asking you to do at the very top. Okay, so this is an, oops, this is an excellence question, so just make sure that you can do these as well. Okay, so it's difficulty-wise, I think this is a very um, standard question one. So um, 
hopefully this is helpful for you um, and i'll see you in question two of the um, um for the next video all right take care bye bye